All right. Hey there. I'm here with the amazing Alicia Chohan. Um, I've known her since November 2019. Um, she's an amazing human being, now a dear friend. Uh, so Alicia is a public speaker, a chronic illness and mental health advocate, an educator, and again, just a close friend that I admire so much. So she has eight years of experience in higher education, psychology, counseling, and mental health. And she combines this knowledge with her life experiences in order to inspire others through her amazing journey. And she is doing so already. Um, so she's been giving lectures specifically on her illness since she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or MS in 2016. Um, so yeah, I met her at this uh, resilience event, um, the biology of hope, um, and it was on mental illness. And uh, Alicia was in the audience and then I got to speak with her after and I was like, why the hell am I up here <laughs> right now? Cause uh, I was just blown away. So um, just immediately like positive of energy and kindness and hope and just you want to be around this person all the time so she came to speak in my um, arts 1100 course in fall 2020 and the student responses were just amazing they fell in love with her as did i so i think i'll just uh read one or two um but one of them is if the word resilience could embody a person that person would be alicia Regardless of the amount of pain and hardship she faces, Alicia proves her strength through empowering herself and others. Um, I chose to write on Alicia because of her qualities. Um, she is admirable, speaks in a relatable way, and is inspiring. Um, and then one more, they're all amazing, but the first thing I learned from Alicia's talk is that life is fragile. No one knows what will happen the next moment. She taught us to live life to the fullest and to be thankful every day for being alive. Alicia is a warrior, and it's so true. So anyways, <laughs> So many, I could read a million, but uh, I'm gonna just stick with the two for now because Alicia probably can't take more praise than that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, Alicia, do you want to, um, I guess you can introduce yourself too. And um, Alicia also writes poetry. So we were thinking of opening up with uh, Alicia reading one of her gorgeous poems. Yeah, um, I guess I'll start off with the poem. So um, back when I got diagnosed in 2016, I started writing a lot of more poetry. Um, poetry has just been something I've loved doing. It's kind of like an outlet. And that year prior to me getting diagnosed, it was a struggle because I didn't know what was happening. So I just started writing on my phone because I kind of lost um, mobility in my hands to write and use a pen. So I started typing on my phone. And then when I was seeing my therapist at the time, he said to me, why don't you just put it together in a Word document and see what it's like? And I was like, okay, cool. I did it. And then I shared it with one of my good friends and they decided to publish it in a book. Amazing. Um, so it's quite thick, as you can see. Um, 413 pages of what happened over the last three and a half years since I've been diagnosed. So I'll start off with one of the poems that I've, this one I've really liked. Um, here we go, okay. The nurse is walking towards me. I can hear the needle whisper. It'll be painless. That's a lie, I say. That one was a very powerful one. Even reading it right now kind of just gives me chills down my spine because um, over the past, so this is my fifth year now being diagnosed, and I still go to the hospital on a monthly basis for blood work and stuff. So. Um, I usually lay down on like one of those um, beds at the hospital to get my blood work done. Um, so when I lay there and I'm just watching, I literally can watch the nurse put everything in the little box to bring to me to stick that needle in my arm. And I look at the needle and that's exactly what I think. The needle's telling me it's just going to be painless. Like, don't worry about it. And I look at it. And I'm like, nope. And depending on the nurse, because sometimes they do a little more jabbing, <laughs> um, but it's the same thing and you think you'd get used to it after five years going every month to the hospital plus all the other infusions that i've gone to but i don't think you ever get used to that feeling and i don't think i could ever get used to going to that hospital every time and being poked even if it's just like one vial versus like 13 vials when i've gotten blood drawn before it's still that feeling of are the results going to be okay? Am I going to be okay? Right. So 